what's happening YouTube? Welcome back to Scents of South Jersey with me, Kellen, for another fragrance review. Today we're going to be taking a look at an 80s classic in its relaunched form from the house of Christian Dior, and that is none other than Jules, or Yule, however you want to pronounce it. So what we'll always do in my individual reviews, we'll break down the fragrance into five parts. First, taking a look at its box and bottle presentation. I'll go over the notes, pick out the ones that I notice the most, talk about its performance, give it my thoughts, and then my overall rating. If it is your first time viewing any of my videos on my channel and you enjoy what you see, make sure to subscribe, hit that red button to support the channel. If you have an Instagram page, check out the Instagram page, Sense of South Jersey. That's my Instagram page. I post photos of fragrances from my collection, do scent of the day story posts and other information about the channel. And if you have a TikTok, follow Sabro88 for all your champagne needs. So let's jump into this review of this 80s classic. Okay, starting things off with the presentation, let's take a look at the box. So honestly, I think this is one of the nicest boxes that I own. It, it is so cool looking. Just that white with these line patterns that go all the way around. You know, it says jewels here. It says the size and the concentration. It's a 100 ml bottle uh, and you know, it's an eau de toilette. This is the Christian Dior logo here for at least saying Christian Dior on the top. You got nothing going on, but that's just a really classy wraparound pattern that they have there. It's like colors like black, kind of like a, you know, a yellowish orange or green. And then it looks like a garnet or, you know, sort of dark red on the bottom. You have some brand information and a barcode. There is a batch code, I believe, stamped in here. This one looks like it is 0L1X. I, if that's the batch code, that would be it. And then you've got um, some more brand information about Christian Dior right there, too. So, um, you know, made in France. And then the 33 Avenue ho Hoke or Hoche in, in Paris, just like they do on the Eau Sauvage bottle. Taking a look at the bottle, the bottle's a little bit disappointing. I think the vintage one is a little nicer looking. Um, but again, you know, what I really like about this bottle, you know, it is see-through. It's got jewels written there in huge letters. Um, and you know, you got some more brand information on the sticker there. Other than that, it's pretty simple. It says Eau de Toilette, you know, Christian Dior, it's etched in the glass. I do like the cap, however. You see that CD logo? You can hold it by the um, cap, you know, it does click into place. Well, uh, I'll make this my scent of the day as I've been you know, wearing it a lot, so we'll see the distribution. Really good sprayer. It sprays a ton on. Again, take a look at that cap and you can hear it does click into place too. So very nice presentation. The vintage bottle, they had a built-in sprayer. They had a, a sort of a brown bottle. I thought that one was a little nicer looking, but regardless, at least the cap is very nice. The box is very nice. It is a nice presentation. Again, this is the 2016 relaunch. The original one came out in 1980. Um, so it's an aromatic green scent, you know, sort of categorizes that, but it's like a Fougere Sheepra. Just, you know, I would put it in that category. Okay, let's take a look at the notes for Jewels by Christian Dior. Again, this is the 2016 relaunch. The original one in 1980 had way more notes and they really shrunk it down here um, to just two on the top, three and three for the middle and the base too. So again, the original one, the vintage one from 1980 had a lot more. In this one, you know, in the top, we have galbanum and herbal notes. And then in the middle of the fragrance, there are three notes. It's cyclamen, hedione, and black pepper. And then in the base, the complete dry down, you have fur, leather, and cedar. So when I think about this fragrance, the notes that I pick up on are absolutely the floral and green immediately, the black pepper all sort of you know jammed in there. And then obviously the fur and the cedar. The other ones, some of the ones I'm not as familiar with, the, with exactly what they smell like, like galbanum, I wouldn't be able to pick that out, but I definitely get some you know fur, and you get uh, the cedar notes, and I, you get some floral um, put in there too, which kind of gives it a little bit of a, a funk, which is which is pretty cool. And I'll get into that details later. That's in, in, in my thoughts section. But those are the notes for Jules by Christian Dior, the 2016 relaunch. Okay, let's talk about the performance for Jules, 2016 relaunch, Christian Dior. This stuff is awesome performance wise it is easily eight hours um i've noticed it on my skin and clothing especially well past the work day you got no disappointment here in, in the terms of performance it lasts it projects it is strong um, and i wear a lot of fragrance when i put it on so this one's dangerously strong so beware um you know if you're someone that likes to be a little bit more subtle maybe two sprays the third one being under your shirt that would be it because this stuff will stick with you Okay, so it's time for my overall thoughts 
for the 2016 re-release of Jules by Christian Dior. So um, I think Jules or Yule, it means like guy or buddy or boyfriend or friend, male friend or something like that, player. I think that's what it is, like a player. Some guy who's, you know, obviously taking down a lot of girls. But let me talk about the fragrance. This stuff is amazing. I'm so happy they ha I have this. I'm so happy that it's been re-released. I've, I've never tried the vintage. Um, but I'm so happy with this one. It's almost like I, I wouldn't even want to take the risk on getting a bottle and have it be, you know, spoiled or whatever. So this stuff, um, it's, it's like nothing I own. A lot of people, I'm going to, I'm gonna, just going to put some more and get that opening again. A lot of people have asked me, oh, what do you, what do we, what do you compare it to? Cause I started wearing it a lot and posted it on my Instagram for the, uh, the daily stories. And the only thing, initially I couldn't think of anything. I couldn't think of anything else that it reminded me of because it's so unique. Um, there are bits and pieces of other 80s powerhouses in there, but what it did remind me of is almost like a niche denim. Like, take denim. That was the thing that I, when I was thinking about it for a while, it reminded me of denim, but like on a really high-end designer scale or a niche scale, whereas denim, you know, is a very bargain-friendly fragrance. Amazing fragrance, but it, it isn't expensive at all. Um, but the quality here is going to be obviously infinitely better. So, you know, it starts out with that herbal, like fir, pine, green, you know, cedar, spices, but it's got the florals in there too that sort of add this bit of funk in there. So it's got all the best attributes of a high-end quality, top shelf aromatic fougere, but with you know hints of the 80s super powerhouses like Koros. Could this be Dior's answer to Koros because they both came out the same year, give or take one year. I'm pretty sure they're both 1980 releases, maybe 1981 for, for Koros. Um, and that's also when Chanel's Antaeus came out. So that year was a big, for the, all the big designer home houses, were you know was a year for for their powerhouses but this one really is really really good for lovers of green fragrances you have to try this one um i would i would i would again recommend if you can get a sample of the vintage or you know that it's going to be in perfect condition and it's a good price because i've looked at them and they're very expensive then maybe otherwise it's unnecessary just go with this one because it smells amazing and you know it's going to be um, at perfect condition and it cost $89 right off the Dior website and where I'm at in New Jersey I remember when I ordered this last year because I ordered it you know wore it liked it then it kind of sat for a long time and I revisited it this year not because I didn't like it I wanted to try again I'm like oh let me let me just wear you know jewels and I'm like wow I forgot how good this stuff was but for where I'm at in Jersey I'll place the order I'll have it the next day so get it right off the Dior website I think fragrance that has it too but for like a dollar less I would almost just go to the Dior's uh, uh, website and just get it directly there at least it's easy to get in the United States thankfully too um, it's also almost got this hint of fuel in it I don't know if that's the, the floral notes and I think that's what that is but it almost has a fuel hint to it as well which I found really interesting but overall it's a beast mode green fragrance where would you wear this? This is easily three seasons. Easy, no problem. Fall, winter, spring. You could probably rock it in the summer if you wanted to, if you're not season conscious. Um, I know I have, and I would just go uh, you know, easy on the sprays so you don't choke anybody out. But again, whatever you want to do, it's awesome. Um, you know, This is something I would wear out. I like to wear this out at night. This is definitely like an attention-getting fragrance. It's, a, it's an excellent scent. It could be a signature scent. Um, it's, it's high-end, but it's not super expensive. I think this thing hits on all points. It, it's versatile uh, in terms of when you can wear it during the year. Um, it would be a great you know, going out scent. I wouldn't necessarily make it my work one because it's a little powering overpowering but it, if you get if you love green fougeres you love the classic 80s stuff um and you want something that smells like a high-end fougere with like a hint of that powerhouse you know strength behind it with the performance and the projection this stuff is it okay let's give my overall ratings for the 2016 re-release of jewels by christian dior so presentation i absolutely love the box i like the bottle i don't love the bottle i really like the cap I mean, it's nice, you know, thick glass, it's heavy bottle, but I just wish they did a little bit something, maybe some sort of pattern on the bottle, maybe a different shape, maybe a built-in sprayer, sort of like the classic one. So I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It's going to lose two points on the presentation for me. Uh, the performance is fantastic, easily passed a work day. So in that 9 to 10 hour range for me, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 for the presentation, or excuse me, for the performance. Um, and the scent... It's fantastic. It reminds me of other things, but it's also unique. It's a strong scent. It smells fantastic. It's not for lovers of, of more modern or blue or sweet things or gourmands. It's nothing like that. It's just a masculine, mean, green machine. So it's going to get an eight and a half out of 10 for me on the scent, which is going to bring the overall rating from me for the 2016 re-release of uh, Jewels by Christian Dior to an eight and a half out of 10 overall. 
Okay, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for me. That's my review of Jewels by Christian Dior, the 2016 re-release. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments section. Let me know, have you tried this version? Do you have the vintage? Do you have an opinion on which is better? Do you think the vintage is worth it? I haven't tried the vintage, but I'm just so impressed and happy with this one that I almost wouldn't even worry about it. Again, my personal opinion. Would I be open to trying the vintage in a perfect scenario where I know it would be fresh? and I would be a good deal, absolutely. So again, thank you all so much for watching and hanging out with me today. You know I really appreciate it. I always appreciate all the interaction. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, check out the Instagram page, and if you have a TikTok, go ahead and follow that one. That's the Sabro 88. I will see you guys all in the next video. Take care.